everybody, Dr. Sean Talbot here. I'll get my camera going, so hopefully you can see me. There I am. Um, welcome to the Tuesday night call tonight. Um, tonight we're going to talk about uh, the links between mental wellness and physical health because it is National Take a Hike Day. So we figured <laughs> there's a national day for everything, right? There's a national cookie day. There's a national ice cream sundae day. There's a national milkshake day. Uh, not all these national days are, are always healthy, um, but we are... Um, we are trying to focus on the ones that are that are a little bit healthy. So obviously hiking is 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 very nice. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about um, the links between you know. So so if this is the first time that you're hearing from us, Amare is the mental wellness company, right? So a lot of times we talk about mood or stress or focus or sleep or so, some aspect of mental wellness. We talk about the science of it on these Tuesday night calls. We talk about the research. We, talk, we do a deep dive sometimes into the ingredients that we use in our products and how they impact mental wellness in a in a in a in a, in a positive way. Um, and tonight, what we're going to do is talk about the links between mental wellness and physical performance. And this is a this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I've been doing this for a long, long time. Um, I, I, early in my career, I was what you might call a sport nutritionist, right? But the particular angle that I took on sports nutrition was using nutrients to not just improve physical performance, right? Make you, you know, you know, a little bit of an overstatement, you know, jump higher, run faster, lift more weight, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? That's the end outcome of what people want with sports nutrition, but there's a piece in the middle that is really, really important, which is if we can use nutrition to change your biochemistry and that biochemistry can change how you feel in terms of your resilience and your motivation and your drive, et cetera, then that can fuel your actual performance. So it's not like, like you take the nutrient and you automatically jump higher. You take the nutrient, you automatically run faster, that kind of stuff. There's a lot that goes on in between there. So the kind of work that I've done for a long time, sometimes these days is called nutritional psychology. Uh, it's this idea of using a nutrient, changing the biochemistry, see how that biochemistry impacts the psychology and see how that psychology can impact that physical performance. So, you know, that's kind of the, the linkage that I want to step people through tonight. And the thing that I think is particularly interesting about it, and I think the thing that is particularly um, sort of mainstream, even though we're going to use athletes as our sort of um, way to discuss this tonight, is that everybody should want to feel better. Everybody should want to have the best level of performance in no matter what they're doing, right? Even if it's walking the dog, even if it's their, you know, training for a 5K, even if it's, you know, whatever, whatever level of performance you want, you want to be able to feel good doing it and you want to be able to go, go to the highest levels as possible for you. So those are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I do it as a scientist, but I also do it as a, as a, you know, as a, as a participant, um, you know, back way back in the olden days, I was, uh, you know, in the elite levels of, uh, of rowing and cycling and triathlon and things like that. Now I just sort of do it for fun. Um, in 2014, I was the, I won a competition called the world's fittest CEO, which was sort of a combination of cycling and running and, and, you know, all, all kinds of all kinds of you know kind of uh, kind of competitions like that. This looks like a really cool picture, but what you don't see in this shot, and this is the advantage of making your own slides because you can tell whatever story you want. What you don't see is two guys just off screen over here who are completely leaving me in the dust. So I'm at my maximum right now, I'm pinning my heart rate as high as it's going to go, and they are really good runners, and they are just running away from me, but it's a, it's a, it's a nice shot. Uh, one of the things that, that, uh, that, uh, that, that we're going to try to talk about tonight is what are the key attributes or what are the key, um, uh, touch points, if you will, about how we improve mental wellness and physical performance? You know, is it, is it that you're out in nature? Sure, that's that's part of it. There's a, there's actually a really cool body of research now about green exposure or blue exposure, exposure to forests, exposure to oceans and bodies of water that can change how we feel in terms of 
overall mood state. And they're actually being used as, as you know, natural therapies for, for, for treating anxiety and depression. So that's exciting. Is it because you're exposed to more sunlight and you're getting more vitamin D and you're getting more serotonin production? And yes, that's a, that's a, that's a part of it. Is it that you're out there moving? Yes, that's part of it. Is it that you're exposing yourself to like, take a hike day. Maybe you're hiking in the mountains, like where I live here in Utah. Maybe you're hiking wherever you are, but you're exposing yourself to nature. And that induces uh, a particular emotion called awe, where you look at a sunset or you look at a mountain or you look at a landscape. And that feeling of awe changes our neurochemistry, changes how we feel, change how we interact, not just with the world, but with, with, with people around us. So we might touch on that a little bit. I've certainly written a lot about that um, in, in in some of the books that I've written. But a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight is, you know, is brain health or gut health or heart health, is one more important than the other? They're all, I won't say equally important. They might be, they might be uh, uh, more important in different ways. And we're going to tease a little bit of that out. We're going to talk about the immune system. We're going to talk about the inflammatory system. We're going to talk about the endocannabinoid system, all gearing up to these are all levers that we can modulate. We can push them. We can pull them. We can adjust them. We can optimize them so that we can improve mental wellness, how we feel, how we show up to a given situation. And based on that, that can improve or, or not, if we're doing it the wrong way, our physical performance. So I am a perfect example of this. Uh, yeah, I mentioned before that, you know, I've done this, I've done this kind of work scientifically, but I've also done this kind of work sort of from a, from a participation standpoint for a couple of decades now. Um, and just in this last couple of years, in 2019, you know, I, I took second place in the, in the, in the off-road uh, triathlon championships. Um, I was one of the top 10 in the long distance uh, on-road triathlon um, uh, competition. Both of those qualified me to go to the world championships in 2019, which of course got canceled because of, I, I mean, in 2020 because of, because of COVID. Uh, same thing with Kona. Uh, the, the, the Ironman World Championships got, got postponed. So we're hoping, we're crossing our fingers that I'll be able to do the World Championships for those two distances and then the World Championships um, on, the, on the Big Island of Hawaii next year in 2020. I hope so. I hope so. And I, and I say this because the principles that I'm going to talk about tonight, I think, apply to anybody, whatever level that you're at. So in 2019, quite honestly... I had no business being at the level of performance that I was, right? Traveling around the country a lot. You know, I was, I was probably on the road more than I was at, at, at home. Very limited amount of training. Uh, when you're on the road, you're not sleeping quite right. You're exposed to a lot of things. So you have a risk of getting sick. Um, you know, you're not able to train at the right intensity. You're not able to eat the right way. There's, there's all kinds of things that get in the way of your overall performance. But by applying the principles that I'm going to talk about tonight around gut health and heart health and immune system health and et cetera, I'm able to get, or I was able to get in 2019, a lot out of my performance because I was applying these, these principles. So on a, on, a, on a fairly low input of, of training, I was able to get a lot of performance out of that of that low of that low training input. So that's an important consideration because I think sometimes when especially when we're under a lot of stress, I think athletes or anybody who wants to consider themselves to be a high performer, um, if your performance isn't going the way you want it to, you think the solution is always to work harder. And that sometimes can be a de detriment that can actually take you further and faster backwards away from your goal. Sometimes it's about not working harder, but working smarter. And I want to give a couple of tips as we go through this. So, you know, I want to ask this question as we, as we lead into this, why, why, why would an athlete or why would anybody who wants to reach their highest level of performance you know, what, what, what are some of the things that, you know, around this idea of mental wellness and physical performance should you be, should you be considering, right? One part of, of, of what we're talking about is, you know, like I, like I just said, you don't want to just put your head down and just blindly go harder. You want to do it smarter. So we have to think about things like this. We have to think about what our gut is doing. If your gut is not right, you're going to not be able to 
digest and absorb and assimilate the, 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 the highest percentage of nutrients out of your diet. So there's one aspect of just simply having a better gut is going to allow you to access more of that nutrition in your diet. So we don't want to have a leaky gut. We'll get into that. Um, a lot of athletes suffer from, especially in their competitions, when they're going at their highest intensities, they suffer a lot from, from, from GI problems. Uh, this is probably the number one reason for triathletes, ultra runners, marathon runners to have a poor performance. They have some sort of a, sort of a GI issue. Um, this is how I kind of got into this, into this aspect of, of, of um, immune system regulation. Um, years ago, when I, when I was a consultant for the, for the United States Ski and Snowboard Association, the, the, the main topic that we had with these athletes was that they were getting sick and they were getting hurt. And that was obviously Im impeding their performance, you know? And so just like I described a second ago, when you're traveling all around the world, you can't quite eat right. You can't sleep right. You're under a lot of stress. These athletes would be training hard. So they're putting travel stress and sleep stress and, and food stress on top of an already stressed system. You, you know, they're being stressed out by their, by their workouts. And if you reach a breaking point and you catch uh, an ERTI, an upper respiratory tract infection, you're not going to be able to ski at, at, at your best. So we started looking at immune function. If we could use some of the principles I'll talk about tonight around gut health and, you know, give, give, giving the right fibers and things like that. If we can improve gut health, we can improve immune system function. If we can improve immune system function, we could keep these athletes from getting sick so they could perform better. But what we also found was separate from them being sick or infected, they also felt better. They also performed better. A uh, particular psychological metric called vigor was up about 20%. So we have some data that we can talk about tonight where we can, uh, where we can show that, that there's a physical performance aspect to keeping your immune system strong. And there's also a mental performance aspect to keeping your immune system strong. And now, nowadays we know a lot, a lot more about the mechanism of action. So we'll get into that a little bit. So we're talking about inflammation and recovery. And this is another piece that I, that I work with some elite level performance on. This is um, recovery. At, um, enhancing recovery, especially post-exercise recovery, was one of the things that I worked with very closely with the, um, with the US Track and Field Association. You know, so again, you know, whether you're traveling and getting sick or you're over-inflamed and not recovering and you're getting sick or you're getting hurt, that obviously is gonna be, a, is gonna be a, an obstacle to your, to your peak performance. There's a wide variety of metabolic benefits that we're gonna talk about tonight. Lowering stress hormones like cortisol, a, a, a modulating metabolic hormones like like insulin, which governs glucose, or thyroid, which governs overall metabolism. Um, athletes are always concerned about their body composition. So if we're in the wrong metabolic state, we have a predisposition to store belly fat, and that's certainly nothing that anybody wants. But certainly, certainly athletes don't want that. Um, this one, which is directly linked to mental performance. Can we use these principles that we're gonna talk about to improve focus, to improve engagement, to improve flow, to improve the abilities athlete, uh, to improve the athlete's ability to get into the zone where they're really just sort of effortlessly having their highest level of performance? And then can we also prevent this? Can we prevent people from choking? you know, at that critical juncture of their competition, you know, can they make the right decisions in the moment? That's something that we call cognitive flexibility or strategic, strategic, um, uh, 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 um, strategy formation, right? There's all kinds of ways that we can see that there is a link between mental wellness and physical performance. So those are some of the things that we're going to talk about. So one thing I want to start out with, though, is to show you that there is a difference between athletes and people who are, who are physically active and sedentary counterparts. Um, when we look at things like microbiome, this is a very, very busy slide, but I wanna put it up just to remind me to, 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 to really make this point. A couple of studies came out a couple of years ago, looking at elite level athletes, professional athletes. This, this particular trial was, was in rugby players. And what you're looking at is that, that there are, on, on this sort of left-hand graph, this is showing that there are different levels of particularly important bacteria, things like acromancia, 
um, things like this, 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 this Verico uh, species, Bacteroides, Fecal Bacterium, Lactobacillus, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's re really not important to dig into this very much, but we know that there's a different collection of microbes in an athlete's microbiome or an exerciser's microbiome versus a sedentary. Why is that important? The reason it's important is that if you have the right bacteria and you feed them the right raw materials, they can produce the right bioactive compounds, things like this. These at the top of this scale, what you're looking at are, 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 are a collection of short chain fatty acids. These are signaling molecules. They're good for the gut. They're good for the brain. They're good for the immune system. They're good for your metabolism in a variety of ways. So one clear way to look at this is this set of graphs down here, where you're looking at athletes and you're looking at non-athletes, but who have a who have a who have a low body weight, right? So it's not it's not a body weight thing. It's it really is a movement thing. It's a it's a dose of physical activity changes what grows in your gut. As a result of what's growing, you change the metabolism. So what you're seeing here is something like this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero in on this one because I'm gonna talk a lot about butyrate tonight. Here's butyric acid. You can see that the athletes have a lot more of that than the than the than the lean sedentary. And the reason that's important is for the reason that I just said. That's a signaling molecule that has a variety of benefits that are gonna be that are gonna be beneficial for how we feel and how we perform on a lot of different levels. So I'll give you I'll give you specific examples as we go through, but I just want to use that as a setup. Um, this was a this is this is not science, but this I think is really cool to show people. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, Outside Magazine. Uh, did a really interesting story about the athlete's microbiome and showing that, um, that there, there are differences that we can see in endurance athletes or power athletes or, um, or uh, sort of you know, mixed athletes like, a, you know, like an obstacle course racer kind of a thing. And what you're looking at here is the differences with, with specific athletes, right? So here's Alex Honnold. Um, if anybody's ever seen that 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 gut wrenching movie called called Free Solo, where Alex climbs, um, you know, climbs up this sheer rock face with with no ropes. If you've never seen it, you have to see it. Like I, I remember sitting in the theater going like this because my palms were sweating, just being really nervous watching him. By Alex's own admission, he eats his words, quote unquote, an f load of fiber which is one of the reasons that you see tons of blue. This blue, because he eats so much fiber, means that he's growing a lot of these bacteria called Prevotella. We see a lot of those in vegetarians and vegans. Um, here's, uh, here's Rob Krar. He's uh, one, of the, one of the world's top ultra runners. You can see he's got a pretty good uh, a distribution of different, different species of bacteria, lots of red. What's red? Red, if we find red, this is bacteroides. This is, this, is, this is good for your immune system. It's not necessarily good for your predisposition to gaining weight, but if Rob Carr is running you know, hundreds of miles in his races, um, he, he probably needs more bacteroides to harvest more of the energy from his diet and he, he burns it off. If he stopped running, the fact that he has a lot of these bacteroides uh, means that he would be predisposed to harvest a lot of those calories from his food, but then if he's not burning them off, to store them you know, as, as, as belly fat. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here is uh, Amelia Boone, uh, one of the one of the world's top um, obstacle course racers, like like Spartan races and and Tough Mudder and things like that. Um, I think she's taken a step back from that as doing more ultra running now. But look at you know when 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 this was taken, she was she was the world champion of uh, of of obstacle course racing. And look at this light blue. This is a weird one. You don't see this in anybody else's, at least at any any you know any high levels. Um, light blue, let's look down here. Um, this is a species of bacteria, Acinetobacter. Um, we don't know much about it, but we know that it, it, it lives in the soil. <laughs> and so if you're running around and rolling and crawling in the mud, you can see mud all over her. Uh, you, might get a, you might get that in your mouth. You might get that in your gut. And it, it, it might populate in your microbiome. So I just, I just think this is, this is interesting because it shows that different types of athletes, a climber, 
an ultra runner, an obstacle course racer have, have different microbiomes, right? What we know about this, right? There's lots we don't know, but what we do know about it is that there are independent associations between what you eat, meaning your diet changes your microbiome and what you do in terms of your movement, exercise changes microbiome. And so they change them. Um, you can see I'm keep looking up here. We've got a waiting room. So people come in and I have to keep admitting them into this Zoom call. Um, so if you see me looking, looking off into space, um, this, is, this, is, this is why I'm doing that. Um, so we know that there's a, there's, a, there's a distinct benefit of diet, the amount of fiber you take, the kind of phytonutrients you have, whether you're eating fermented foods, whether you're supplementing in a particular way. And there's also an aspect of exercise. Um, you know, are you a power athlete? Are you an endurance athlete? Are you sedentary, et cetera? And so they're obviously complementary to each other, uh, but they, but, 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 but we have done studies to show that they are, they are distinctly different. Right. So, all right, enough of that. I could talk about this for a while because there's a lot, there's a lot of cool things on there. So Amari is a mental wellness company, right? We are the mental wellness company. And we, we go to great lengths to really try to tell people that when we talk about mental wellness, it really is this very, broad umbrella definition that goes everywhere from struggling all the way up to thriving. And where most people find themselves in our modern society is somewhere in the middle that we call typical. A typical person would, would, would have daytime fatigue. They would have light they would have nighttime restlessness. They would have a little bit of achiness. They would have a little bit of brain fog. They would have a little bit of just just feeling kind of blah, and wanting to feel better, but not knowing how they move up this mental wellness continuum. And so what we like to say to people is that everybody's on this continuum somewhere. And we have to realize these three things about mental wellness. The first one is how you feel is not just in your head. It's also in your gut. And we'll talk a lot about that tonight, about the microbiome, about gut integrity, about what you're feeding your gut and how that can generate these signals that go out to the rest of your body and determine your performance but it's also in your heart. And those signals end up being more electrical in nature. And I'm gonna show you a specific study about that because it links not just how we feel, but also how we perform. So our second brain in our gut and our third brain in our heart play a major role in mental wellness. And this is a big disconnect to, for a lot of people because so many of us have been trained all along with our life that if we're lower on this mental wellness continuum than we wanna be, we should just be tough. We should just suck it up. We should just, as a previous slide tonight said, gut it out, right? We should just, you know, use our brain to by brute force, get ourselves to feel better. And that really isn't the way that science tells us is the most effective way to do it anymore. That's all we had 10 years ago. But nowadays, in the last five years, we've developed a lot more tools, right? A lot more of those levers that we can harness, that we can bring to bear on this problem. So now you can actually do something naturally to improve your mental wellness and your physical performance. And that's those, those are the things that we're gonna talk about tonight. And they all fall within this context of, of what we call the three brain construct. They're, they're, I don't want people to think that the mind is not important, right? There's still certainly plenty of things we can do here in the brain. In my, in my, in my next book that's coming out, um, sort of the middle of next year called The Mental Fitness Diet, uh, there's a whole chapter about mindset where we're using techniques to make our mind stronger, right? So I call it mental fitness diet because it's not just what you're putting into your gut, right? That's, that's what people think of as your diet, but it's, it's the movement that you're exposing yourself to, physical activity. It's the thoughts that you're exposing yourself to. It's the, it's the, it's the, um, it's the amount of sleep that you're exposing yourself to, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's movement, it's food, it's thoughts, it's mindset, it's, it's, it's the people you're exposing yourself to, those social connections, all of that matters, right? So the diet of your mind, the diet of your heart, the diet of your gut, and then how they all communicate with each other. One of the really cool revelations over the last couple of years is that we know what we do in the gut doesn't stay in the gut. It gets to the brain. So serotonin, for example, we know that 90 to 95% of your body's serotonin, the neurotransmitter sort of of being happy or sad, 
most of that is made in your gut. And that has signaling effects in the brain through this thing that we call the axis, this communication network. So the signals from the gut going to the brain through this axis are primarily biochemical in nature. Serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, GABA, those sorts of things, short chain fatty acids that I talked about a few minutes ago and I'll talk about again. The signals that are coming from the heart and going through the axis to the brain are more electrical in nature. So we can measure heart rate, we can measure heart rate variability, we can measure cytokines, inflammatory molecules that are coming from the immune system that is part of the axis and are going to each of these brains, right? So this communication network, this axis, is this overlapping, redundant communication system where there are, are numerous chemical signals going, well, not just chemical signals, chemical signals, electrical signals, um, cellular signals, all going back and forth between these between all of these brains through, through 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 all of these different signaling systems. So I don't want to spend too much time on this. I've done deep dives on the axis before. I've done deep dives on the gut. I've done deep dives on the heart. You can go to my YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Dr. Sean Talbot, and you'll find all of these if you really want to dig in to any particular area. I really want to give sort of an overarching and then really give some very um, prescriptive, you know, what do I do kinds of recommendations for anybody who wants to improve how they feel and how they perform simultaneously. So I have my little performance cocktail that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So, you know, to sum this up before we start getting into some of the nitty gritty, if your microbiome is out of balance, you might feel bad in a variety of ways, right? And if you're, an, if you're a high performer, you will often just feel you know, something's off, you know, I'm not on my game. I'm not clicking or firing on all cylinders, right? There's all kinds of terminology that we use to, to, to say something's off. And a lot of times what's off is either the kinds of bacteria that you have or the, the metabolic bioactive products that those, that those bacteria are producing in your microbiome. So we know that if you're out of balance, you might have, have all these descriptions, labels you'll put on it. You're tired, you're sad, you're achy, you're tense, you're hungry. You might be getting cravings for junk food and that could be not really a signal in your brain it's a signal your brain is receiving, but that signal might be coming from your gut. So if we can alter what's happening in your gut in the second brain, people will feel good. People will perform better. Their, their appetites will change. Their energy levels will change. Their motivation levels will change. And we've been able to see this in a, in a, in a wide range of clinical trials, some that we have done at Amari, some that other laboratories around the world have done. So I'll give you some examples of those as we, as we go through here. Okay, so if you're an athlete, or let me say it this way. If you have a body, you're an athlete. That's one of the sayings from Nike way back in the day, which I, which I really, really ascribe to. I think that everybody should consider themselves to be an athlete in a, in a particular way. And when we're athletes, we are putting stress on our bodies, stress from the physical training that we're doing. But stress is... We also have to consider, you know, when people think about athlete stress, they sometimes only think about the workout. But, you know, when you're when you're when you're working with these high high performance, you know, the workout is just one one little slice of the of the stress exposure that they have that day. Their food is a stress. Their environment is a stress. If, did they sleep good or bad that night? That's a stress. Their immune system, what they're exposed to, is a stress. Their relationships is a stress. It's just layer on top of layer, right? So you know, take the, take the workout piece out. Everybody who's watching this right now has all those sources of stress. And then we put the workout in there and that's another source of stress. So a lot of times when we counsel, especially what we call these, these sort of time crunched athletes, and I would put myself in that category, you've got your family, you've got your career, you've got everything that you're doing, and then your workouts are just this other little piece of it. You have to add up all those little pieces of stress because we know that humans do a pretty good job of, uh, of adapting to and coming back stronger from exposures to this acute stress. And it's because of the nature of that stress. It's brief, it's, 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 it's something that comes and then goes and then comes and then goes. And we can, we can deal with that 
all day long as humans and, and, and thrive in the face of that. What we don't do very well with is chronic stress, the kind of stress that comes and stays, right? This, this, could be, this could be the stress of this pandemic right now. It could be financial stress. It could be a relationship stress that you can't separate yourself from. It could, it, you, you get the idea. That is maladaptive. And, and when we're in a situation of chronic stress, what you end up seeing is that that stress doesn't have you come back stronger. That stress, because it's chronic, actually ha ha has you breaking down. It becomes, instead of becoming an anabolic stress, adaptive, it becomes a catabolic stress, maladaptive, and we break down. And that happens in every single tissue in the body. It happens in your muscles, it happens in your bones, it happens in your immune system, it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it can, and it can lead, it can lead to a, it can lead to a lot of, it can lead to a lot of problems, right? What we want is the right level of stress, right? That right balance point. And therein lies the challenge, right? That is always what we're trying to do is to be able to get enough of a stress so that you reach optimal performance, but we don't hit that tipping point where we give you too much stress and then we see exhaustion and anxiety and, and depression and burnout and all the, all the things that come from breakdown, right? So this happens with psychological stressors, it happens with physical stressors, and it's always about having that sort of Goldilocks, right? Not too hot, not too cold, just right kind of a, kind of a situation, right? So that's the, that's, the, that's the elusive sort of thing. But one of the things that's really cool about where the science is going is that we can measure things. Like we can measure heart rates. We can measure heart rate variabilities. We can measure sleep patterns. We can measure respiratory rates. We can measure brainwave patterns. We can measure microbiome responses. We can measure inflammatory indexes and stress hormone levels like cortisol. There's all kinds of tools that we have now that we didn't have access to, and even more more importantly, starting to integrate them all together so that we can, we can, you know, we can see if an athlete is getting a little bit too much stress and we can back them off. We can see if they're not eating enough and we can have them eat more. There's all kinds of ways that we can intervene. That's all well and good. What if you don't have access to all of these fancy whiz bang measurements, right? And you don't have access to a physiology and biochemistry laboratory like I do. Um, what, what can you reasonably do? Well, you can realize that all these sources of stress aren't just stresses here or stresses here. They really permeate and, and ripple out from wherever the stress occurs to other parts of the body. And so the stress that you might be under might show up in a, in a completely what looks like unrelated part of the body in your metabolism, in your immune system, in your, in your hormone balance. And so using mental wellness as your canary in the coal mine sort of, sort of scenario is a really good place to be. I really can't emphasize this strongly enough that getting in tune with how we feel can really be as it, as it, as useful as some of those whiz bang measurements right you know the athletes that i work with if they can get very in tune with their bodies you know they'll know what pace that they're going without even looking at their at their heart rate monitor they'll know you know it, did they get a good night's sleep without looking at their sleep monitor right so you get you get the idea and it's and it's because of this you know wherever this stress hits it's going to affect our mood it's going to it's going to affect all of these mental and physical parameters simultaneously so w why do we talk about the gut so much and why is the gut so important in a lot of ways, I think that the microbiome and your gut integrity is the first domino in that chain of events of you either feeling better or performing better. And, and let, me, let, me, let me just set this up a little bit. So I, and, and I, and I want to talk about this a little bit because the next thing I'm going to talk about is what you can actually do to improve your gut integrity and, and, and why you should care about that. Because a lot of times when I talk about gut health, Sometimes you can see people go, well, stop right there. I'm good. You know, I don't have any gas. I don't have any bloating. I don't have any stomach aches. My, my gut seems to be good, right? But then if you ask them some of the very key mental wellness signals of having an off, off gut integrity or off gut microbiome, brain fog, 
uh, uh, being lower on that mental wellness continuum than you want to be, right? Your mood isn't quite there. Your focus isn't quite there. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you're a little bit achy. Maybe you can't relax when you when you want to be relaxed, right? You're you're tense or you're irritable. Um, you might be uh, you might have a little bit of uh, weight around the midsection that you don't want to have. Those are those are all those are all signals of your gut not being optimized. So think about this. Look look at the look at the left hand side one right now in green. Healthy gut, healthy central nervous system, um, and and what that means in a nutshell is that there are a couple of things that sort of link together to give us a healthy gut. One of them is a is a is a good diverse, resilient microbiome, the right levels of bacteria, the, the right metabolism of those bacteria producing the right biochemicals like serotonins and dopamines and short chain fatty acids and things like that. You also want to have a good um, environment in the gut. You want to have good pH levels, acidic in certain parts of the gut, basic in other parts of the gut. And you especially want to have a good intestinal barrier. Your gut should be should have good tight junctions, should have good strong, you know, metabolically optimized and pterocytes. These are the these are the epithelial cells that line your gut. Um, if you don't have that and a, and a and a and a nice nice thick mucus lining, if you don't have that, what you end up getting is you have a microbiome that's not right, so you're not sending the right signals. So you're moody, you're irritable. You can't focus, you can't relax, those sorts of things, because you're not getting the right signals to send you towards the right side of mental wellness. If you have a leaky gut, spaces between these, these enterocytes, now you're going to have compounds that, um, or components that should stay in the gut lumen might leak across into the systemic circulation. That's going to lead to more inflammation. That's going to lead to an immune system reaction. That can lead to a to a to a to a broad description of of metabolism called endotoxemia. I've done a whole deep dive about endotoxemia and body weight. If you have endotoxemia, your metabolism is in is in disarray. Your blood sugar won't be well controlled. Your thyroid won't be well controlled. Your stress hormones will be out of whack. Your, it's almost like you have the, the foot on your accelerator and the brake at the same time. So your metabolism is trying to go, but it can't. People with, with endotoxemia tend to be eating a good diet eat, or often they're heavy, right? They've gained weight around the midsection. So now they're trying to eat better and they're trying to exercise more and they could be doing the perfect plan, but their foot is on that break and they can't lose weight. That's metabolic endotoxemia. So if you have this, we see this in athletes who are overstressed, they start to gain weight around the midsection. So they think they need to diet more and exercise harder and they gain more weight around the midsection. So they go harder, they gain more weight around the midsection. Once we can close these gaps, we remove that inflammatory load. We remove that, that, that inflammatory sort of irritation and almost without d doing anything extra, they start to lose weight, their performance comes up. So the gut is a really, really important aspect of this entire chain of events that we're going to talk about tonight. So that's one of the reasons that I want to talk about it first. This is something that should be, um, this is like the foundation. This is the, this is the, this is the doorway in to anybody who wants good physical performance, right? It's, 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 it's the non-negotiable piece of it, right? You have to have good microbiome, good gut environment, good gut integrity. And again, if you want to dive deep into any of those categories, go to my YouTube channel and, you know, look at, look at any of the videos on, on, on those topics. So, you know, when we talk about gut health and athletes go, yes, I want that. You've made the case. I'm just going to eat some yogurt, right? That's a great first step, but doing things like this, eating yogurt, fermented foods, things that have probiotics naturally occurring in them, things like kombucha and kimchi and kefir and yogurt, and there's a, there's, there's a variety of fermented foods that you can get. That's a good start, but that's only going to help with the environment of the gut. It's probably not going to be the level of pre precision and therapeutic effect that will really change your performance. And we'll talk, we'll talk about why in just a little bit. You can eat the right kinds of fibers, prebiotic fibers that you're going to find in onions and asparagus and leeks and, 
artichokes and things like that. Uh, and then phytobiotics, you know, plant, plant extracts, you know, the quercetin in your apples and, and the, and the, and the, uh, the catechins in your tea and the, and the different polyphenols in your berries and your grapes and things like that. Those are all wonderful. One of my favorite uh, favorites of all time is dark chocolate. And it, it's, it's high level of these compounds called OPCs. Um, so anyway, there's all kinds of foods that you can use, right? And this, th th these, we certainly recommend that you eat foods like this. This is like the base of what I call the mental fitness diet, right? That these are things you want to be including, you know, or, or early and often throughout throughout your entire day, but they're not at the levels and sometimes not at the specificity in terms of the strains of bacteria or the specific structures of fiber that we know can take your microbiome into that new level of, 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 of metabolic efficiency. And so that's where supplements come in. That's where we can say, yes, absolutely eat these foods. But if you want to go to that next level, it's, it, it's probably not enough. And you need to look to a supplement because a lot, a lot of these strains that I'm going to talk about in a second actually aren't found in foods. You know, typically they could be added to foods, I guess, but they're, but they're typically not part of that as a, as a normal course of the diet. We know that there are other things that we can do. I've done deep dives about sleep. I've done deep dives about mindfulness. I've done, you know, tonight we're talking mostly about physical activity. Those just like diet have independent effects on the on your gut integrity and your and your microbiome. We know that if you sleep well or poorly, that can change your microbiome and that what changes in your microbiome can feed back on whether you sleep well or poorly. Same thing happens with 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 mindfulness practices, same thing happens with physical activity. So, you know, we we absolutely want people doing these baseline foundational kinds of things, but then there's lots that we can go to to that next level when we get very specific with our supplementation. And so I've trained lots and lots of dietitians over my career. When I taught at the University of Utah in the nutrition department, we, we had a master's program there where we, where we delivered a master's degree and a dietetic certification. So an MSRD program. And it's, you know, I love teaching dietitians because they are very um, enthusiastic about nutrition, but a lot of their training, not from me, but a lot of their training over the years ends up being along the lines of, if you just eat a good diet, you can get absolutely everything that you need for optimal health from a from 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 your baseline diet. And we the science tells us that, that is clearly not true. Let me say that again. Clearly not true. We know that even eating a perfect diet, you're very likely to not even get the, the, the baseline levels of essential vitamins and minerals. And there's lots and lots of data to show this, huge population studies. Um, and so again, if you want to get to the highest levels of mental wellness and physical performance, you have to supplement, right? And, 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 and there's the decision point right there. If you want to get to those highest levels of performance, you need the supplementation. And if you decide to not do the supplementation, what you're also deciding is that you're not going to enable yourself to get to your to your peak mental and physical state. And that's and that's fine. Well, fine for you if that's the decision you want to make that you want to be some suboptimal version of yourself, but that isn't what I want. I think that I think there's a lot of people that are in the same camp as me. They want to do absolutely everything that they can do. But remember what I just said a few minutes ago about eating your fermented foods and getting your right fibers and you know getting the right mindfulness and the right sleep. We don't want to people to think that the supplements are going to replace those things, right? It's not an either or. It's an and, and when you put them all together, you're going to get you're going to get amazing benefits. So we'll I'll actually show you some data um, uh, as as we go through. So when I talk about supplementation, and I talk about that first foundational piece about optimizing your gut health, this is it. And this isn't just gut health. This fundamental systems is a is an entire gut brain axis system. It was the world's first uh, up until this point right now. And I'm talking to you on November 17th, 2020. It's still the world's only 
coordinated gut brain access system that's targeted towards mental wellness. But what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of physical performance benefits from this. So it's a product for the gut, mentabiotics, a product for the brain, mental focus, and a product for the access in between, mental sync. And so that's a, you know, when we when we launched this in 2018, it won this award for the best new finished product in the entire natural products industry. I won't go through all the all the rigmarole of, of, of that, but one of the reasons that it won that award um, as the example of the best product in the whole industry is because of its holistic and comprehensive approach to solving these problems. So we're using specific strains of, of probiotic bacteria that have been shown to help with, with, with mental wellness parameters. So let me, let me just spend a little bit of time on this. We chose each one of these because they have a distinct mental wellness benefit in humans. So this first one, Lactobacillus rhamnosus R0011. This is the genus Lactobacillus. This is the species rhamnosus. This is the strain R0011. Most probiotic products on the market don't even tell you the strain. And if you don't know the strain, you don't actually know exactly what it's going to do for you, if, if it's going to do anything for you. And this, this lactoramnosis is a, is, is a good way to explain this. We know that R0011 reduces stress by lowering cortisol, stress hormone, and improving GABA levels. GABA is the body's primary relaxing neurotransmitter. So this is an anti-stress uh, anti -stress strain. It lowers cortisol, it increases GABA. So you're less stressed and more relaxed at the same time. And you're in that state on demand. You can't take you can't take this strain and automatically be relaxed. You would take this strain and if you need to relax, your microbiome will be will be able to produce the right compounds like GABA to help you relax in the face of stress, right? So that's an amazing strain that we include here. There's another strain of Lactobacillus rhamnosus called GG. So instead of this 11 strain, the strain is GG. That one's really good for travelers diarrhea, but that's a very different effect than an anti-stress effect. There's another strain called GR1, Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1, that's really good for yeast infections, right? So completely different effects, but you wouldn't know that just by understanding Lactobacillus rhamnosus, you have to know the strain. So same, same thing for, for bifido strains, same thing for, for other Lactobacillus strains, you have to know the strain designation in order to know what the benefit is. So look at, look at these, reduces stress, enhances calmness, improves mood. We know the mechanism of action. These are beneficial benefits for anybody, but particularly beneficial for anybody who wants to have the highest level of performance, right? Athletes want to lower their stress. Athletes want to enhance their calmness. Athletes want to improve their mood. And, and here's, here's a very targeted way you can do that with with specific probiotic strains. We do the same exact kind of a thing with the fibers that we give. These are prebiotic fibers that sort of broadly improve stress resilience, not because the fiber induces stress resilience, but this prebiotic fiber nourishes a particular class of microbiome bacteria then those bacteria produce the kinds of compounds that induce stress resilience, serotonins and GABAs and dopamines and things like that. So it's really an idea of bringing all these pieces together. Here's an example of that. These fibers that were chosen were chosen based on their attributes, but chosen specifically because they can nourish the kinds of strains that we're giving in terms of the probiotic bacteria. Then we give you phytobiotics, these, you know, this, th th this third level of being able to specifically and precisely modulate your gut microbiome, phytobiotics, extracts from apple fruit, from grape seeds, from pine bark that we know have signaling effects across the entire gut brain axis. Sometimes they're helping at the level of the microbiome, sometimes at the level of gut integrity, sometimes at the level of that axis, the signals that are being sent, sometimes at the level of where those signals are being received in the brain, in the neurons. So when you put all of that together, the reason that this is different and the reason that, that this is 
beneficial for just if you want to feel better and if you want to perform better is because of its comprehensive nature, because we're giving you those specific strains, we're giving you those specific fibers, we're giving you those specific phytonutrients, and we're really addressing each of those levels from that first domino of the microbiome to the next domino of, 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 of gut integrity to the next domino of access signaling to the next domino, you get the idea. When you put it all together, that's where that that th th those real noticeable performance metrics um, actually show themselves. Okay, so here's 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 some of the here's some of the data that we have on 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 that particular. Um, uh, collection of products. When you take the whole fundamentals, just as directed, take it once a day, you see changes in the microbiome, you see changes in the psychology. And what we're teasing out is, oh, is, is why this sort of middle piece. We know if we change your microbiome, people feel and perform better. And now uh, this, this trial was done in 2018. Um, but follow-on studies that we've done in 2019 and 2020 have been able to show us that the reason is that that microbiome is now producing more GABA. And so you have a better microbiome, you make more GABA, your, your, your tension goes down. Your microbiome makes more serotonin, your depression goes down. You make more dopamine, your, your fatigue goes down, right? It, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's almost like you can harness this microbiome as this new organ. And that organ is, a, is an internal on-demand dynamic pharmacy that produces what you need when you need it if it's optimized. If it's not optimized, if you don't have the right level of bacteria, you don't have enough good guys, you have too many bad guys, or you don't give them the right fuels, or they're not making the right bioactive molecules, or they're, or you've done that, but then you have a bad gut integrity. So the signals are getting all interfered with in terms of like static, you can think of it. Any of that is gonna cause problems and you're not gonna get these kind of benefits. So by making it very comprehensive, it makes it easy for people, right? So you don't have to think about, well, what strains of bacteria do I need? They're already in there. What kinds of prebiotic fibers do I need? They're in there. What kinds of phytonutrients? They're in there. So you get the idea. Making it comprehensive makes it, makes it easy for people to get those benefits. Um, and one of the reasons that's important is because up until this point, uh, up until 2018 when we launched that, there was only a pharmaceutical option, right? Whether you're an athlete or non-athlete, right? There were only antidepressants, anti-anxiety, sleep drugs, ADD drugs, those sorts of things that people spent billions and billions of dollars on every single year. And unfortunately, don't work very well for the majority of people who use them, right? And we've known this since 2009, right? So we've known this for a decade that they don't work particularly well. So it's really good that we're able to bring a natural solution to the market that is really going to help people in a, in a, in, in a very comprehensive, holistic way. Um, for people who want to dig into this a little bit, there was a really good article written by David Roach, who's a, who's a very well-known, very well-respected running coach um, that was posted on uh, the Trail Runner magazine website just a couple of days ago. So uh, I wrote, uh, I, I, I read it, I, I wrote a nice comment to David and his wife, Megan, uh, his wife, Megan is a, is a, is an MD. So obviously knows this space very well to say, Hey, thanks for bringing this up. Right. What he was trying to do is sort of destigmatize the discussion around mental wellness, right? Because people, lots and lots of people take antidepressants. So some get benefits, lots get side effects. Uh, I think if people knew that there were a natural option out there that could help them with, with mood and resilience and focus and you know all those sorts of things, and also maybe aid their physical performance at the same time, I think a lot of people would be interested in you know giving that a shot and seeing if that got them to a place higher up on that mental wellness continuum before they would have to resort to, you know, one of these synthetics that, you know, again, for a lot of people aren't particularly effective and sometimes can have some pretty serious side effects mentally and physically and um, performance wise. So um, I want to say this too, bef before I step into my, so the next slide is my performance pack. Okay. Um, in, in the biotechnology space right now, there is a rush to, to, to identify two really important aspects of the microbiome because they have impacts on, on, um, 
on on mental wellness and 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 stress and aging and performance. Uh, and I and I give you I give you two examples here. So these are both from very recent scientific papers. The one on the left is a is a biotech company up in Cambridge that is looking to identify. Um, uh, GABA producers in the microbiome, right? So remember, GABA is the body's primary relaxing neurotransmitter. If you have more GABA, you're able to relax, you're able to uh, de-stress in the face of stress, you're, it helps with sleep, um, it helps with mood, it does a, it does a wonderful, lot of, lot of wonderful things. Um, these bacteroides uh, um, uh, uh, types of bacteria in the microbiome we know are GABA producers, right? So this particular biotech is trying to identify those strains and then either um, develop synthetic versions of those strains that might produce even more GABA uh, or, or drug those strains so they produce more GABA or, or something, right? Very, very, very pharmaceutical approach. We've already shown, and, and, and so look at this bullet point right here. Bacteroides producers, um, these produce more GABA. Why you want that? It's, it helps with stress, helps with metabolism, helps with mood, helps with sleep, helps with irritable bowel syndrome, and you know, sort of gut-specific benefits. Our studies on Amari products have already shown that we're able to increase these bacteroides by about six percent. That means you have more of these actual bacteria that will have an ability to make more of that GABA, right? So 6% improvement, very substantial improvement in a pretty short amount of time, four to six weeks, depending on the trial that we're looking at, um, gives, gives you more of those, of those powerhouses that can make, make the compound that is so important for all these areas. The one on the right-hand side is looking at sort of an anti-aging effect or looking at the effect of aging on the microbiome and the effect of the microbiome on aging. So this is a very, very busy slide, but what it's looking at is that as we age or as we're stressed, and remember at the top of this call, I, I talked about all the different sources of stress that we're exposed to on a, on, a, on a daily basis, that can change the microbiome. So as we age and as we're exposed to chronic stress, our gut microbiome is altered. We see a reduction in the kinds of bacteria that make another set of signaling molecules called short chain fatty acids. So short chain fat, where'd my cursor go? Short chain fatty acid production is decreased and mental and physical performance is impaired. So this particular trial was looking at, could we keep the microbiome young so that we produce a youthful amount of short chain fatty acids so that we don't have those decrements in physical performance and mental performance. So our cognition can be sharp. So we don't become frail. So we age what's called in the aging world successfully, right? We know that, um, centenarians, right? People who are hundred years or older, they tend to have a different microbiome than, 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 than people who are who are um, not aging successfully, right, or who have who have um, uh, uh, developed problems when they're seventy or eighty or something like that, right? So there's a, there's a, there's an aspect of the microbiome potentially helping us buffer our lifestyle stresses, and so we've already shown in our studies, again over four to six weeks an 89% increase in short chain fatty acid production capacity. So the way that we measure that, we measure a, we measure a gene associated with, with this enzyme called butyrate kinase. That's an indicator to us that we either have more of the actual short chain fatty acid producers or we have more short chain fatty acids being produced like, like butyrate is a good example of that. Uh, and so I'm going to, I'm going to stop there. I could talk about this slide for another 20 minutes, but this gives us the ability to be able to change our gut, change our brain, change our body because the metabolic effects we've been able to see lowering blood sugar. We've been able to see lowering body fats. We've been able to see these real sort of more physical, less mental wellness oriented because of what we're doing in the gut. So by looking at the gut first, we're able to have this, this mental effect and this physical effect simultaneously. And it's the reason I put this up there is to, is to say that Amari is not the only one doing this, right? There are pharmaceutical companies doing this, there are biotech companies doing this, but we are the only ones that are taking a natural approach to this, right? Giving the right fibers, giving the right strains of bacteria, giving the right phytonutrients, giving the right, you know, 
cocktail or recipe of, of nutrients so that we can enable the microbiome to do this, to do this on its own on demand, right? And that, that I think is a really exciting area because it enables us to do things like this, which is say, okay, athlete, and remember we're all athletes. If you want to improve your performance, this is what I would recommend. Uh, I would recommend every single morning your foundation is a pack that we call Fundamentals Plus. So it's that Fundamentals pack that I showed you before, Mentobiotics for the gut, Mentofocus for the brain, Mentosync for the, for the axis in between, but it also adds in Menta Heart for the heart so the heart and the brain can come into coherence or resonance with each other so you can have mental performance and physical performance simultaneously. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So you take that every single morning. So this, this, this actually is my, my performance pack. This is what I do when I'm trying to get the most out of my performance. So every single morning, I'm taking these four products. As recommended, two capsules of Menta Focus, two capsules of Menta Sync, two capsules of Menta Heart, wash down with your, with your, with your, with your mentabiotics mixed up into water or juice or tea or whatever, whatever floats your boat. Then before my workout, you take another two meant to heart. Uh, and if I'm doing a morning workout, sometimes this two is gonna, is gonna suffice if I'm going out like in the next hour. If I'm doing a lunchtime workout or an afternoon workout, I'll take those additional two meant to heart about 30 minutes before, before my workout. Then during the workout, what's what's in my bottle, whether I'm running on the trails or I'm or I'm or I'm cycling, um, is uh, is is uh, is Energy Plus. And then post workout, either immediately post workout or that night before I go to bed, I take uh, I take a dropper full of hemp GBX. And I, what I want to do now is what I talked to you about fundamentals already and the importance of microbiome modulation and gut integrity and gut brain access signaling already with the fundamentals pack. What I wanna do now is talk a little bit about our research around mental heart and the, and the heart brain axis, and then talk a little bit about energy and a little bit about hemp GBX and see, see how they can improve your, your physical performance, okay? So we have known for a long time that there is a heart brain axis, that these two tissues talk to each other. And we've, we've, we've known that since the 1950s, but we didn't exactly know why. If you want to know the nitty gritty of it, you can, again, you can go to YouTube and my, and my YouTube channel, and you can see, you can see the entire meant to heart gut brain or heart brain axis uh, deep dive. I'm not going to go into the, into the nitty gritty of that, uh, of that right now, but, but suffice to say this, what happens, like I said earlier, what happens in the gut doesn't stay in the gut. It gets transmitted across the axis to the brain and can take your mental performance in a, in a good direction or a bad direction, depending on what's happening in the gut, what signals are being produced. Same thing happens with the heart. What the heart produces in terms of electrical signals, your heart rhythm can be picked up on in a positive way or a negative way by your brain waves, right? And if they're in cohere, if they're in balance with each other, coherence, resonance, there's a lot of way to describe that. We can, we can improve physical performance, heart, and mental performance, brain, simultaneously. And we did a lot of research to tease this out. We looked at different individual ingredients, things like astaxanthin, things like palm fruit bioactives, um, things like black cumin seed oil, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we did a lot of research to see what the individual effects were on the heart, on the brain, on the inflammatory cascade, et cetera, et cetera. And we've, we've, we've put our money where our mouth is, right? We've, we've published all of this. We've presented some of our data at the, the International Society for Nutritional Psychiatry Research at the end of 2019, right before the whole pandemic uh, started. Uh, we've published in peer-reviewed journals. Um, these are all open access journals, by the way, so you can go and you can um, you can download the papers yourself to see the see, see the nitty gritty of what we did, but to sum it up, when we wrote a paper, sort of outlining this overall heart brain axis, we were able to show benefits for heart health, benefits for brain health that simultaneously improve psychological mood state. So that was really interesting to us, right? That if we did something in the heart, people felt better. If we did something in the brain, people felt better. But what we found was that they also performed better. So there was this very close relationship between the physical body performance and the mental mind performance. And so we, we, we really decided, is there a way that we can 
put all of these nutrients together in a cocktail to bring that out and really and really and really do something with it for people's performance. Um, we presented this trial, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give you a, a sort of a quick snapshot of this because I've done a whole deep dive about this particular trial at the American College of Sports Medicine meeting that happened at the end of May. So because it's pandemic season, we had to do this virtually, but we're able to present this optimize, optimization of heart brain access signaling improves mental and physical performance. That I was, that's what I was just explaining before with that little cartoon. If you can improve what's happening in the front, if you can improve what's happening in terms of signals from the heart to the brain, you can improve both mental performance and physical performance. And we were the first to show this from the perspective of a nutritional supplement that could do this, that we could improve both physical and mental performance. So we, we just presented that at the American College of Sports Medicine meeting, whatever May is, five, five or so months ago, six months ago, maybe. And this is the cocktail that we use. This is what eventually became Mental Heart. We did studies on palm fruit bioactive individually. We did, we did studies on astaxanthin individually. We've done studies on black cumin seed oil. Black, black cumin seed oil really, really seems to be an amplifier of some of these effects. It has its own anti-inflammatory benefits on its own, which are great, but it really seems to amplify the benefits that we're getting with these other two superstar ingredients. And then we have, we have standard, you know, not standard, but ingredients you would expect to see in a heart health formula, things like things like bergamot orange extract and coenzyme Q10 in a really, really highly absorbable form. And when you put all that together, here's some, here's some palm fruit. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but to, just, to, just to make the quick point that when we choose an ingredient, it's not just based on its science. That's certainly the thing that gets us interested in it. But we also look at things like supply chain and sustainability and you know are they using pesticides or not we, we you know we of course say not but we also want to travel down there and meet the people who are harvesting these things making sure that they're being treated fairly and paid fairly and all that kind of stuff which none of this has any bearing on how the product works but it does have bearing on how we sort of, you know, not just interact with companies, but with people and, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do in the world. So I just want to make a quick mention of that. We, we go to this level with, with, with every ingredient in our portfolio. Um, one of the reasons that I, that I really want to say a quick word about these palm fruit bioactives is that when we launched it in 2019, we were the only company in the world to, to, to have this ingredient. Here we sit in November of 2020, we're still the only company in the world that's actively using this ingredient. And th 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 this is amazing. This has been maybe 10 years of research out of MIT. I studied entrepreneurship at MIT. Um, and I met some, some very brilliant scientists there that were doing some work on this particular palm fruit bioactive um, or, or this particular palm fruit, palm fruit set of bioactives. You can see their chemical structure here. These are really, really unique bioactives. You don't find them, certainly at the concentration that you find them here, almost anywhere in the, in the, in the plant kingdom. So the fact that we can get them from this water soluble uh, palm fruit um, uh, uh, a source is really interesting because over the years, the, 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 this group at MIT has been able to show benefits for brain health, benefits for metabolism, benefits for cardiovascular parameters, uh, benefits uh, for, for certain um, aging parameters. And so we worked with them to extend some of those. A lot of those data were collected in rats and guinea pigs and mice and you know, to, you know, test tube experiments and things like that. Uh, so we want to expand some of that into, into humans. And so partnering with them, we were able to show things like this. We we're able to measure heart rate variability and show that that as a measure of exercise stress and response or adaptation to that exercise stress, this was substantially improved with palm fruit bioactive supplementation versus a placebo group. So this shows us that the heart is doing better with, with those PFBs. We're also able to show for the first time ever that, that this, this uh, uh, nutrient, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, was increased 22%. So this is showing we can do something in the heart, we can do something in the brain. As a result of having more BDNF, the brain works better 
cognition and clarity and those sorts of things. And we know that from other trials. We didn't measure cognition in, in this particular trial. We measured mood state in this particular trial. We were able to show that people felt better, lower fatigue, lower, um, uh, uh, lower burnout or higher vigor, um, uh, better levels of, of overall mental performance or men mental fitness because we're having these brain benefits. We're able to show what we're calling a healthy aging effect here because we are able to show uh, lower levels of, of inflammatory markers and higher levels of antioxidant protection. So, you know, though, both of those, either of those separately would protect cells from stress. But we also know that if we can get them, if we can get them coordinated, if we can get them in tandem, you don't just get a one plus one equals two, you get a one plus one equals 10 or 12 because of the because of the um the synergistic nature of what's happening on the oxidation side and the inflammation side so you could call this a you could call this a healthy aging uh effect you could you could call this a uh, a recovery enhancement effect you could call this a tissue protection effect you could you could call this a lots of things if you're enabling the cell's ability to protect itself from those particular kinds of cellular stress so lots and lots going on there with those individual nutrients but then when you put them all together you're able to get that you know all all, all of those mental and physical parameters um, um you know all in line with each other. So that's what you would do to begin with. And what you hear back from people, right? It's, it's, I love collecting the data and being able to show this one up, this percentage, and that one up, th that one down, that percentage, and be, sort of really be able to tease out the mechanisms of action. But what's really cool is when you give the finished product to somebody and they use it in their real life. And what you end up hearing people say, using mental heart for just a short period of time is they'll say, Hey, I have this 5k course that I do. And now I can do it faster at uh, what feels like the same intensity. Um, or I can do it at the same speed. I've always done it, but it feels easier. Or you hear people say, you know, I'm able to get to the top of the stairway without, you know, huffing and puffing or uh, without having to stop halfway up. Or you get people who say now they get to the end of the day and they're not wiped out, exhausted. They're able to, you know, put some energy into their family or their hobby or their community or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? Those are real life examples of the parameters that we're measuring in either our biochemistry studies or our physiology studies and things like that. So that, that, those are the kinds of things that I love to hear back from people. And we hear, we hear them all the time. So what are you going to be, what are you going to take during your exercise, right? Energy is a great, is a great thing to do. It's a, it's a stick pack. You mix it up with water. It's a, it's a pomegranate lime flavor. The base of it is matcha green tea. It has a, it has a low level of caffeine, about 55 milligrams, na natural caffeine that's coming, that's, that's coming from green tea. But where it really shines is the fact that we're using this patent pending GBX blend. This is the, the, the flavonoids, the polyphenols from pine bark and, and uh, um, uh, apple polyphenols and, um, and grape seed. So apple fruit, grape seed, pine bark that really bring a different dimension to this whole discussion of energy. So what you get here is the only product on the market that gives you three tiered energy. So physical energy, which some people might, might, might realize as motivation, mental energy, which people will realize as focus, you're able to sort of dial yourself in there, but then mental awareness, which is the ability to be motivated and dialed, but also to be present and connected and engaged. And that is something that doesn't exist in the energy world right now. Most energy drinks or, you know, you know, workout cocktails will help you with motivation, right? Sugar can do that. Caffeine can do that. There's a lot of stimulants out there that can do that. They can also bleed over a little bit into focus, but a lot of times you get jittery and that can, that can make the focus go away. The reason we can get all three of these simultaneously is because of that overall cocktail, that overall recipe. And one of the, one of the highlights here is this leaf that comes from the Amazon called Wayusa. Sometimes, sometimes because it has a G, people say guayusa. It looks like a green tea leaf, but it's, but it's a completely different species of plant. They'll use it sometimes. They'll either take that leaf and roll it up 
and sort of put it, you know, in their in their lip and just kind of suck on it. Um, or they'll make or they'll make a tea out of it. They'll they'll pour hot water on it and then drink the water. Um, what you get from this, this is what gives you this this third part, this mental awareness. Um, the the indigenous people there in sort of Ecuador area of the of the of the Amazon would say that it improves their connection with the universe. It, it that's engagement, that's connectedness, that's awareness, and so it does have an attribute of energy and motivation and keeping you awake and keeping you alert. But that third piece of it is really, really important. So we get these overlapping benefits in all three of those aspects of, of energy, physical energy, mental energy, uh, 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 that third piece, mental awareness, partly from Guayusa, partly from the matcha, partly from the, 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 the polyphenols. And this is, this is one of the effects that you see from, from one of those polyphenols, that, that endogenol, that, that pine bark extract that we use. A lot of times your mind is buzzing. And, and if you're using a traditional energy drink, like a well, I'm not going to name any of them. You know all the energy drinks out there. This monkey mind can actually get worse. That buzzing in your brain, instead of being tamped down like it is with pine bark, it actually gets exacerbated. And so you might be able to go in and like put yourself through a through a hard workout because you're amped, but that isn't what what most people are looking for. Most people are looking to be able to get into the zone, get into that flow state. So instead of being amped, they're really in flow where things are just, they're just happening. It's almost like when you're in a competition, being in flow or being in the zone, it's almost like everything around you is happening in slow motion. You almost lose sense of time and you're just in that moment, right? And it doesn't come from any one nutrient. It really comes from that cocktail of nutrients. And that's that's the kind of workout I want to have every single time. And when when I'm when I'm using energy in my bottles, it's more likely that I'm going to get into that and have this, you know, this this calming, improved focus, improved concentration, flow, engagement kind of a kind of a workout that's that's what i'm looking for for my workouts and that's and that's also what i'm looking for when when my workout is sitting here on a writing deadline or doing a blog or answering questions that people send me on email or whatever right that's when i want my performance to be high as well not not just when i'm running or just when i'm riding my bike so you guys get the idea and then the last piece that i want to talk about tonight is is this is is hemp gbx and how this can be used you know a lot of people use it for pain or for sleep or for 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 uh, taking the edge off their tension and their irritability and that they certainly should use it for those for those reasons but it can also be used as a post exercise recovery to lower inflammation to help with those aches to help you get back to a state where the signals are going the right way. And the thing that sets hemp GBX apart is that, well, let me, let me, let me, let me say, let me set this up first. Why would you want to take this? When we're exercising, if you've ever gotten that runner's high, right? That, that sort of post-exercise glow where you just feel amazing the reason for that is that your body has naturally produced these compounds called endocannabinoids. Cannabinoid refers to the chemical structure. Endo refers to the fact that you've made it internally endogenous. So our bodies already make these kinds of things. There's a wide variety of them. They all have sort of different shapes. The two, the two primary ones that you, that you hear about if you read about this are anandamide and 2-AG. Um, so, so these structures are, are similar in certain ways to phytocannabinoids, right? Similar structures, but now phyto means is coming from plants. And there are lots of plants that have phytocannabinoids in them. One plant that is particularly rich in phytocannabinoids is hemp. And the reason why we might want to supplement our diets with phytocannabinoids is if we're not making enough of these endocannabinoids. So th there's a there there are syndromes called endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome where you might not naturally make enough of these things, and as a result of that, you have pain or you have mood disturbances or you have irritability or you have 
uh, you know, problem sleeping or your whatever, right? All the, all, all the things that endocannabinoids do, if you don't have enough of those endocannabinoids, you, ha you, have, a, you have a problem you know, in, in, in those areas. So you can use phytocannabinoids to supplement so you don't have those problems. Or you can use phytocannabinoids to supplement. So instead of, um, instead of treating a problem, you're taking yourself to a better place. And the reason that you have the, a bit, a, the ability to do that is that these, these, these cannabinoids have, have, have signaling abilities all across the body. Some of them are in the brain, central nervous system. Some of them are in the, are in the, in the periphery where they might signal your immune system. They might signal what's happening in the muscles. They might signal what's happening in the liver and the, and the fat tissue, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of places where if you have the right blend of cannabinoids, you have the right blend of signaling molecules, you can feel better, not just in your head, you can feel better and perform better in your, in your entire body. And the secret to getting the right signals is to not focus on any one of these cannabinoids exclusively. So the one cannabinoid you've all probably heard of is this one right here called CBD, cannabidiol. But in the hemp plant, there actually are about a 100, 120, 140, depending on the assay that you look at, different cannabinoids. And what we know is that the collection of that natural family is much better. The signaling is superior in all of those ways that I said earlier to just having a just having one isolated cannabinoid. So the anti-inflammatory effects are better, the mood effects are better, the relaxation effects are better, the anti, you know, anti-inflammatory, you know, all the benefits that we're talking about are all superior when you have that family and you can take that family of cannabinoid signaling and make that even better by surrounding it with other nutrients like terpenes and fatty acids and et cetera. And that's the approach that we take with our hemp GBX. We give a full spectrum hemp oil extract, but then we blend that with black cumin seed oil, with black pepper oil, with white frankincense oil, so that we get a really interesting effect where we have this, 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 this entourage effect where it's not just let me see if I can find it on here, where it's not just CBD, cannabidiol, but it's the whole family of cannabinoids. It's the whole family of naturally occurring terpenes. And by doing that, we get this really cool effect that no other product on the market delivers, which is patent, which is patent protected right now, or at least protected by a patent application that we filed um, that, 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 describes this two-phase effect. So it works, so in red here, it works via a previously unknown mechanism of priming ECS, stands for, stands for endocannabinoid system, priming endocannabinoid system receptors and activating endocannabinoid receptors for overall superior benefit. So let me, let me explain it this way. Remember that slide a couple of slides ago where I had the little cartoon of the places that you have cannabinoid receptors. They might be in the brain, they might be in your muscle, they might be in your immune system. Those receptors in order to be activated need to be ready to be activated. They need to be open in a sense. A lot of times they're closed. They're closed by stress, they're closed by uh, uh, over inflammation. They're closed by being oxidized. They're closed by being glycated. They're, they're closed by uh, lots of reasons, right? Poor lifestyle, poor nutrient choices, et cetera. If, you're, if your endocannabinoid receptor on whatever tissue is, is not ready to be activated, if it's closed, no matter what you do, no matter what amount of CBD you give or any other cannabinoid, it's not going to get in there and, and have an effect. That's one of the reasons that people have tried CBD products before or even good hemp, full spectrum hemp oil have not gotten good benefits because you can't get that activation signal into a receptor that is closed. And so what our product does is it does all the activation, but before it does that, that, that holistic activation, we prime the receptor. We open up that receptor so it can be activated. And that's one of the reasons why people who have tried other products before and say, I don't think that's for me. It, I tried those products and they don't work. It's either because they got a junky product and it doesn't have good ability to signal or it had a good ability to signal, but they were closed down. 
our product is the only one that does phase one, phase two, prime activate. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons it works as well as it does for so many people for so many different conditions It's one of the products that's really cool. I've got a, I've got a bottle of it sitting right here on my desk. Um, it's one of those products that you hear amazing testimonials because in this person, it helped their pain in that person, it helped their sleep in that person, it helped their exercise recovery and that person, it, it helped them calm down et cetera, et cetera. So there's that. But that's not the only kind of recipe that we protect with patents, with intellectual property. We've done that for this heart brain axis that I explained to you with Menta Heart, where we uniquely improve mood and mental and physical energy levels. We do that for, for metabolic enhancement, where with fundamentals in Project B3, we have different patent portfolios that look at what's happening in the gut and how that can have benefits across your entire metabolism whether that's whether that's neurotransmitter metabolism to help you feel better, whether that's um, whether that's uh, cardiovascular metabolism to lower cardiac risk, whether it's um, energy metabolism around insulin and thyroid and blood sugar and belly fat to help you lose weight. You know, these are all really, really different ways of thinking about mental and physical performance. And if we can think of them in these, in these very holistic ways, then we can take performance to levels that were not even thought of before. So, you know, I, I, I went through a lot of that very quickly tonight in honor of national take a hike day. I hope people did that today. If you didn't do it today, Hey, take November 17th or take November 18th and go out there and do it tomorrow because th this is a different it's a different world now. We have new science that we can bring to bear on these issues to either solve a problem so you feel normal again, or to, to take you to a place that you didn't even think was possible in terms of your overall mental wellness and physical performance. So we're super excited to be able to do this and bring this out to people. We have a full money back guarantee on every single product in our product line. So if anything that I said tonight even sounds remotely interesting to you, give it a shot and then see what this science means when you plug it into your own body and you'll have your own story about how it improved that, how it improved th this other thing, how those things combined and took you to this other level that you didn't think was possible. It's a really, really interesting time to be part of Amari. So thanks a lot for taking a look tonight, you guys. I'm going to sign off there and I will see you next Tuesday. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye.